This is how Charles Jenks describes the architect's creative invention. Blub there, blub here, an inspiration, finally the great idea. This type of architectural theory is much too simplistic. Architectural anthropology works with five lines. Subhuman architecture, that is, nest building behavior of great apes. Semantic architecture, fibrous signs. Domestic architecture, huts and houses. Sedentary architecture, permanent villages. Urban imperial architecture, stripped and durable monuments. History. The German prehistorian Karl Narr published this scheme of the evolution of Euro-Mediterranean culture. Most important is the diagonality of civilizational influence. Traditional cultures are preserved much longer in the north. Prehistory can be studied as living tradition. Nest building behavior of the great apes is a very complex phenomenon. Constructive behavior with tree nests is about 20 million years old and has strong impacts on the body. The terrestrial ground nest with its rooted foundations and its knotted triangle stability can be taken as a prototype of human construction the birth of architecture. With climatic changes in East Africa, the ground nest becomes dominant at the edge of savannas. Did it favor bipedic upright body position of the early builder? Social life of a small nesting group, drawing according to a plan of Japanese primatologists. The arrangement of five peripheral nests protects the center with female and baby nesting in tree. Paleolithic rock art, in particular the so-called tectiformes, show clearly that constructive behavior, forming cages, traps, huts and the like was a potentially important part of material culture. Forms which are interpreted as heads of horned animals can now also be interpreted as signs and symbols representing the primary type of aesthetics, what we call proportion, showing the harmony of opposites. Such signs were used to indicate important places of the environment like water sources or fishing grounds and so on. Many signs seem to indicate human figures, one in this group evidently with very complex structural surfaces like in this final picture of a woman's figure. The jade pillar made of bundled reed is erected as a sign of the pharaoh's 30 years of wealthy power. The same jade pillar appears here as place and gate marker of a sanctuary. A cattle breeder sanctuary with a compact place marker contrasted with flower garlands. Note the gate markers paired with fibrous Ishtar Inanna signs. 
Similar cattle breeder environment, similar sanctuary, showing reed hut with Ishtar in Anna signs. So-called Assyrian life trees, which in fact are artful creations with fibrous materials using binding and knotting as constructive means. Very likely they documented the hegemony of the settlement founder and were cyclically reproduced over great periods of time. Earliest Sumerian script. Did temple priests note the signs of tax-paying villages on clay tablets? The sign of Ishtar Inanna, representative deity of early Sumerian cities, speaks in favor of this hypothesis. Maypoles as a powerful expression of local territorial constitution and sustainable local culture against integration into feudal or national territories would gain a provoking new meaning. The hypothesis that monumental types in architecture had fibrous prototypes was maintained by Walter Andre for the Ionian Column. He interpreted it as a derivation from a fibrous bundle, the Ishtar Inanna sign of ancient Sumer. He presented many forms like the Neandria capital as intermediators of this evolutionary field. The Ionian column thus becomes an important symbol of primordial aesthetics, a model of polar harmony, a sign of deeply prehistoric significance. <laughs>